Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. We're going to carry on with the Bitex build and this is part two. In part one we had a look at the DDS VFO, followed it with a low pass filter and an amplifier. And in this part we're going to build a bandpass filter, two amplifiers and have a look at the mixing process where we mix the VFO and the 7 MHz RF together to take us to our target intermediate frequency of 12 MHz. The bandpass filter is fairly simple. I've nicked the design off the internet. I've used the uh, mini ring core calculator. Uh, I happen to have some T686s and I can see that I need 36 turns. So my bandpass filter has been built and it looks very much like this. I've done a sweep of the bandpass filter and it looks remarkably good. Um, the two markers you can see are at 7 and 7.2 megahertz. So this bandpass filter is then followed by one of these bi-directional amplifiers. I've built the bi-directional amplifier, well there are two of them in fact in this part of the circuit and this is what it looks like when it's under test on the bench. A quick hookup of a signal generator to the input with a scope at both ends shows me I've got about 18 dB of gain. The mixer itself is where things start to get interesting. We've got two tri-filler wound inductors. I showed you how to wind that in the last video. I've done my toroids ready and they look like that. Uh, they're wound on T3743s. I set up a diode testing circuit so that I can monitor and check to match the uh, characteristics of some diodes. When you plug a diode into this you'll see that the DMM changes and as the PN junction heats up so the voltage will increase. You have to wait for the voltage to settle, make a note of it and try and find four diodes or so that are pretty close in voltage and then we'll use those four in the mixer itself. So the mixer itself is now built on the board. It's got the amplifier at the input and the output. This is what the overall test setup now looks like. So I've got the VFO, the 7.1 MHz signal coming in, and this is what the output of our mixer looks like. So there's all sorts of signals in here. We've got our target signal at 12 MHz. We've got twice the RF at 14.2 MHz. We've got a mess in the middle, which is my shack frequency reference, which gets everywhere. We've got the RF minus the VFO, and as you go up in frequency, so you've got more and more and more signals. So the next job is to pluck out the 12 megahertz signal that we're looking for, filter that out, get rid of all the other rubbish, and uh, that's the job of the crystal filter that we'll look at next. I've drawn the crystal filter schematic, which I'll link in below with all the other diagrams that you need. And there's four crystals and five capacitors. The capacitors are all 100 picofarads. Very simple, simple, normal, straightforward design. I've built two. I built one where I spent a lot of time matching four crystals for exactly resonant frequency. And I built another one with the first four that fell out the bag. These are the sweeps of the two filters and they look almost identical. There's very, very little difference in the characteristics. If anything, the purple trace has got a slightly wobblier top and that's the one with the matched crystal. So the random chosen crystals look like they're probably produced at least as good, if not a slightly better filter. So we've got the test set up now, as the picture showed. This uh, oscilloscope here is showing the output of the VFO, which is at exactly 4.9 megahertz, which should represent 7.1 megahertz tuning point on the radio. This is a signal generator, which is generating a an RF signal which is being injected into the bandpass filter. I've put it at 200 millivolts peak to peak which is a very strong signal um, but just for illustrative purposes. And then the spectrum analyzer is sat looking at the output of the crystal filter. And this marker is uh, currently at 11.998333 megahertz. Now what we can do if we alter the uh, the frequency that's being injected into the bandpass filter, what we can see is how the tuning point of the crystal filter alters. So as I lower the frequency, you will see that the output from the crystal filter begins to drop. And that's because the mixed signal, the frequency of the mixed signal at 12 megahertz, is falling down the left-hand side of the skirt of the crystal filter. 
as the frequency increases so it gets to the center point which is where the maximum RF is passed through and then if I keep increasing we'll see it decreases again as we fall down the right hand skirt of the filter so we can determine by this that the the tuning point of of our rig at the moment which is according to the VFO is set at 4.9 megahertz which should represent 7.1 in actual fact because the fact that the crystal filter peak is not at exactly 12 megahertz we're finding that the tuning point of this rig now is 7.0978 megahertz though we could compensate for that in software so that the display reading is accurate compared to the actual crystal filter point. So this is how the mixer is working. The output of the mixer is coming through the crystal filter is being cleaned up beautifully and all that we've got left is a single signal at our intermediate frequency. So in the next video we'll look at taking our 12 megahertz intermediate frequency signal, passing it through a product detector, converting it to audio, amplifying it to finish off the receiver section. We'll also take a look at how the circuit works in the opposite direction, inject some audio in the right hand side if you like and watch that and look at the signals as it passes all the way through the rig to generate RF at our target 40 meter band. See you next time.